I'm Alan O'Connor Cork. Welcome to Round the Square. On this week's Round the Square, a rebel blockade facing Donegal. Out of the championship, but carries Darren O'Sullivan, older and wiser. The thing was recorded, it went viral. The whole place had it, I think even my mother heard it, which was embarrassing. Kilkenny hurling legend DJ Carey's new role. If you ever played in a training session where Brian Cody, he doesn't even blow a whistle. And super scores from this week's championship action. But first, is Croke Park set to be the focus of renewed global attention? GAA Central Council has agreed to ask 2013 Congress if it's willing to allow up to six GAA grounds to be used for the Rugby World Cup in the event of a successful IRFU bid to host the 2023 or 2027 tournament. A Westmead man will be in charge of hurling's biggest match of the year, St. Oliver Plunkett's clubman Barry Kelly will referee his third All-Ireland final on September 9th. Cork's column lines of Nemo Rangers will be the man in the middle for the minor decider. Who will be first into the 2012 All-Ireland Senior Football Final? After steamrolling through Munster, Cork collected another piece of silverware this year. Celebrations on Lee's side were muted though as they chased down a bigger prize. Now Donegal stand in the way of a place in the 2012 decider. Already on a history-making run, Dun and Owl are back-to-back -back Ulster champions for the first time ever. And looking to get a shot at Sam for the first time in 20 years. Round the square caught up with Cork midfielder Alan O'Connor and Donegal centre-half back Carl Lacey for insights into their seasons to date. There's a great buzz in the county now, with the county doing so well and you know, we were 10 Ulster this year and you know, the flags are starting to go up outside houses and banners are starting to go up everywhere as well so you know, it's, it's a great place to be at this time of year. We've never played Kerry before, we've, we've played them in the National League but you know, it's not the same come championship time and um, to come up here to Crow Park and you know, I suppose over the years you know, you're watching them play semi-finals, finals, year in, year out, and you always wonder what it'd be like to play them. And you know, we got the chance this year. And in fairness to the boys, we went toe to toe with them, and you know, we we went six points up in the second half. And you know, Kerry being Kerry, they always they, they came fighting back at us. And thankfully, we just got over the finish line in the end. The ultimate is winning all, or and just get the feeling after. You know, um, you don't you don't know what it is the big build up and the big weight and the, you know just just like. When it was 20 years since Cork won the last All Ireland, and uh, you know, you're just waiting for that feeling, and you're, you're ever wondering is it ever going to come, and all the effort and you know hard work that you put in is, are you going to ever going to achieve it? Are you ever going to get over that line? And you know just just the relief that couple of seconds afterwards, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a special moment, and you know it's something that you live for the rest of your life. Every year you want to progress, and the, last year we were, we made it to an All Ireland semi final, and you know the only way to progress now is get into the final and. You know, that, that stuff you dream of when you're a kid, getting and playing in an All Ireland final, you know, and we're only 70 minutes away now and we're hoping we can get over the line. Cork, you know, they're, they're probably they've been favourites for the All Ireland since the start of the year and I think rightly so, like, um, you know, they've been there, thereabouts, knocking on the door the last five, six years. They have their one All, Ar one All Ireland in 2010 and, you know, they're hung they, they have definitely have the hunger back this year. They were probably caught in an All Ireland quarter final against Mayo last year and, you know, to see likes of Colm O'Neill and Kieran Sheehan, these boys do crusades and see them coming back, playing for the game, shows you what hunger they have. After 2010, we said, right, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we worked hard during the winter and we done what had to be done. You know, we went on, we had a good league campaign, we won the league and we maybe we thought, geez, we could walk through this again, you know, kind of we got a, a false sense of purity, kind of like we had to, you know, maybe we didn't show Mayo the respect they deserved. And, you know, on every championship game now these days, like every team is so close and if you're not, 100% in it, you know, like another team will nick you. We had a few injuries, you can say injuries while he's less down, but you know, we, we, we'll come back this year, we're a different hunger, like we will respect everyone as much as they should respect us as well, you know, um, we won't get into that false sense of security that, you know, 
we did maybe last year. When you're a kid dreaming, like you know, I, I was in the Hogan stand in 1992 when Anthony Malloy lifted the cup, and ever since I've seen that, you know, that's that's the one thing I wanted in, in my sporting life, and you know. I'm what I'm 140 minutes away from it now, and um, you know, Cork's Cork's in our way, and now, and you know, I'm just hoping that you know we, we can do it as a team and, and, and get into the final. Luckily enough, now I'd say we'd want to have the best records or the best percentages in Ireland at the moment for winning things. I'd say, and uh, you know, like we'll strive to keep that because we know what the bad days are about, and you know, we'll try to keep as many of them out as we can. Armagh footballer Stevie McDonnell has been studying both sides this season and his Ulster neighbours will have a keen ear on who he's tipping for victory this weekend. Up until the Kerry match, Donegal really only tested by teams inside of Ulster and, and I wasn't sure um, you know, when, when they come up against another team outside of the province how, do, how, how they would react to it. But certainly um, they reacted in the best possible manner and they scored 1-12, a low enough scoring game, but they still looked um, very comfortable throughout this game. And it'll be the springboard, of course, for this uh, Donegal team. You know, any time you beat Kerry, regardless of what type of team they've out, it's going to give you a huge amount of confidence, and I'm sure Donegal will, will gain a confidence because of that. I've gone against Donegal in every game so far, and they keep proving me wrong. Um, and as an Ulster man, I'd love to see Donegal win. So I am going to go Cork on this occasion. <laughs> um, I do think Cork are the strongest team overall. They've got the strongest panel and they've got the likes of Paddy Kelly who, who at the minute is struggling to get his place in the team and, and I've played with Paddy, I've been fortunate enough to play with him last year in Australia and he's a top class inter-county player and when, when players of that calibre are struggling to get their, their place in the team it shows the strength that this Cork team have. Cork v Donegal throws in this Sunday at 3.30 in GAA headquarters. Before that, it's Meath v Mayo in the Electric Ireland Minor Football Semi-Final at 1.30. He's been one of the most consistent performers for Kerry since his arrival on the inter-county scene and has tormented defences up and down the country with his explosive running game. But for a change this season, Kerry's Darren O'Sullivan will be watching the concluding stages of the championship from the stands. He's been chatting about the steep learning curve he's been on since joining the Kingdom panel, both on and off the pitch, and has his own views on this season's final pairing. To me, Cork are a standout team. I think um, they've been impressive without hitting top gear yet. Um, Donegal have obviously brought their game to new levels this year, but I think Cork will beat him. Having said that, if Donegal went on to beat Cork and win the Ireland, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I think uh, the other semi final, I think Dublin will win, mostly because of Andy Moran's injury. I think he's the real heart and soul of that team. I just think he's a great player, a great leader for me. It's a massive blow and a cruel blow for him personally after breaking his leg before as well. Like So I think it'll be a Cork Dublin final. You know, I've been very disappointed and down, especially all the way out. Not, not, you know, it's bad enough to lose, but you know, the way we did lose, when they got out of the game plan, it was hard to break down. It's quite a wet, slippy day. Made, uh, made it quite difficult to do the simple things right, I suppose, and we just didn't, we just didn't deserve to win in the day. It's tough work training a team like Kerry. You know, you're, you're out seven days a week. Um, one bad game and, or, you're a disaster, like you know, you made the wrong call, you should have done this or whatever. Like, so I, I was a bit surprised in the sense that I know how much he loves coach and loves Kerry, but it's, it's a tough slog, like you know, it's, it's hard work. And I just point to see him go, but at the same time, you know, I, I can see where he's probably coming from too. Like, it's one of them things you don't really uh, enjoy it or appreciate it at the time, and I suppose still haven't really sat down and think about it too much. You know, it's one of the things you think about when you're finished, but. Uh, yeah, obviously I think I was 22 when I got it, like, uh, so he's only a young fella, like, and still a bit of a messer, like, and in fairness to the boys, uh, the crack that, that we got out of it, they, I was on the butt of the jokes, the boys were catching me out left, right and centre, like, Dara Shea got me one day with, a, with an interview, of course I poured my heart out to him, he, he was from a, a paper, and, but I gave an interview, and of course I, I said to the boss, I said, she the papers on the phone there, and he goes, yeah, go into the office, and I'm sure I was, Concentrating so hard on uh, giving proper answers and being mature, and oh, he went down a different road then. I go talk about women and stuff. <laughs> of course, I kept answering. <laughs> the thing was recorded; it went viral. 
the whole place had it. I think my mother heard it, which was embarrassing. So, uh, good man for Twitter, right? I'm going to be talking pure rubbish at times, but it's good crack, like, you know, you'd have the odd uh, keyboard warrior, I suppose you'd call him, who'd come up with the comments, which they're just they're funny, like, you know, but I enjoy it. I think it's great crack, like, and it's a good way of talking to fellas from other counties. And, like, you know, I'd, I'd have made friends with fellas from other counties just for, through Twitter, like. Mostly soccer players, rugby players, a lot of GA players, and of course a couple of birds along the way as well. <laughs> I don't want to grow up for another couple of years, anyway, but uh, I'm hoping to go and do marketing and DIT. Like so, uh, hopefully all going well. That'll, uh, that'll end up being a good call by me. But if not, uh, I might be ringing you for a job. Celebrity spotters would have had a field day at St Conlet's Park in Newbridge, which hosted a hurling match in aid of the Irish Cancer Society, featuring several famous faces from Irish sport across soccer, racing and Gaelic games. Stars from GAA soccer and racing togged out along with other recognisable match officials. It finished honours even with funds going to cancer research. Davey Russell and myself, we arrived at this uh, situation. Um, Davey knows that some of those jump jockeys can hurl and he was anxious to take on my staff. We decided then that uh, we'd probably be able to raise a good bit of money with the people that we were able to get on board. And uh, we contacted the Cancer Society then at that stage and we told them that we'd like to raise the money for research. So they got behind it then as well. And, uh, that's how it was such a success. I'm just delighted to be here. I was first of all to just throw in a ball, but then got roped into refereeing it, and uh, I got a lot of abuse from David Russell. I'm disappointed with that, so you notice he got the yellow card. You can't be whistle happy if, if you ever played in a training session where Brian Cody, he doesn't even blow a whistle, so at least I blew it a few times. I tell you, a lot of these guys can hurl. You know, it's amazing uh, just put, put guys out, they can hurl, and what, what's even more, they're very competitive. I was hopeless, but I'm um, my second game in 29 years, so uh, I think it showed very, very rusty, but um, I got away from Mark Landers for one minute, and I managed to get one lucky old goal. I suppose me from Galway, you're kind of rare, does it really? Football and hurling. I played a bit of camogie, useless at it. Gave it up when I was about 15. I started to get into hair and makeup and all that kind of crack. It was just, it was too dangerous, it was too risky. I played a bit of camogie when I was younger, but I decided I wanted to keep my front teeth because the Athen Rye girls were tough. <laughs> I was really nervous, I won't lie to you. I've been looking at YouTube clips for the last month. <laughs> what a lines person does, I know. I mean, it was great crack. I was just trying to remember. So when red goes out, it's green, it's that way. It's the... So I was trying to concentrate the whole time. I was deep in con uh, concentration. I think I was wearing the wrong shoes though. The booth probably weren't the best thing to be wearing. We have 50 in the kitty now this evening and uh, I think we have pledges for another 25. So we'll raise 75,000 in all. TJ Reid, goal on here! Brilliant goal! Coming through the centre is Aidan Fogarty. He has the space, he's on the 20, takes a shot, and it's in the back of the net! Fogarty looks back out first, TJ Reid, trying that little chink again, and then flings it high. Oh my word, it drops over the bar. Gordicus to last week's competition winner, Brendan Ring from County Cork. Fancy two tickets to the Mayo v Dublin semi-final? Then answer this question. In what year 
did Mayo last play in an All-Ireland Senior Football Final? Email your answers along with your name, phone number and postal address to roundthesquare at gaa.ie by midday, Monday, August 27th.